December 21st, um, 2021, and I'm going to do red. I'm going to do two reds. I'm going to do a whole lot of red. Not the album, whole lot of red, which is terrible. Playboy Cardi album. It's not good. There's one or two songs that are kind of interesting beats, but he's a abysmal rapper. And uh, yeah, that album sucks. But the problem is not that he's an industry plant. The problem is he's an untalented industry plant. Taylor Swift is a very talented industry plant. Um, she's never actually had to work a day in her life artistically. She's just been made a star since she was very young and had very little semblance of talent. But over the years, you know, like the other good industry plants, the Beatles, people like that, she developed her style, and I think Red is her breakout album. She has a few tens. I think I like her the kind of feisty, you know, taking the reins off Taylor. So I think my favorites are Lover and Reputation. And I think objectively her best album is probably 1989, but my favorite is Red. Which is also my favorite King Crimson album. So, I'm going to review them. Um, Red, I feel like, just has the best start to finish. Kind of shows you all the all the moods you want from Taylor. Which, those moods are mostly... I'm a superficial slut having sex with high-status men. And then succubus-like reporting on the failed relationships. Where I just had sex with people that didn't have any substance but were attractive and now I'm blaming on them that they did that to me um, which is great it's a wonderful wonderful pop star to have in the era where victimization is the most important social currency in society perfectly appropriate Taylor Swift is our you know Aretha um, Red, there's a lot of great songs on Red. Um, I did Taylor's version because there's a 10 minute version of All Too Well. Other than that, most of the bonus tracks are filler. But we need 10 minutes of All Too Well, don't we? All Too Well is great. That's one of her best songs. They should be 20 minutes. They should have just let fucking Dopapod or fucking twiddle do a fucking 35 minute all too well in my opinion but we're not there yet maybe on the on the taylor's version redux um but yeah red doesn't have any bad songs on it really it has a few filler songs in the middle of it but state of grace red treacherous i knew you were trouble all too well 22 i almost do we're never getting back together that first run is the best first run of any um, any Taylor Swift album. Specifically, the first two songs, State of Grace and Red, are great, all too well, classic. We're Never Getting Back Together is just one of the best straight up Taylor pop songs. Um, also, this, this string of like holy ground, sad, beautiful, swift, tragic sad beautiful tragic i'm reading it off the of wikipedia holy ground sad beautiful tragic the lucky one that is like the emotional kind of peak of the thing uh sad beautiful tragic specifically could be like you know straight up indie rock song which kind of foreshadows folklore another one of her best albums which is you know all co-written by Desner, The National, who The National's records are substantially better than any of the Taylor Swift records, but she's not the anointed industry plant, or, you know, whatever. They aren't. They might be. It's a weird thing to plant is The National, because they don't have any singer. The lyrics are very uh, dense. It's a bad plant. If you're if you're industry, don't plant national. Plant Taylor Swift, please. Um, but yeah, 
those are the best songs in the record. Other than that, yeah, there's a bunch of like demos and B sides. There's a song with uh, Phoebe Bridgers, which is nice to get like the new industry plants, uh, sad girl music featuring in the the kind of top forty industry plant. I think the industry plants should collaborate. We should have the rap industry plants collaborating with the indie rock industry plants, collaborating with the hip hop industry plants. We should, everything should be fake, but we should make the fake people uh, make fake art together. Uh, but yeah. This time, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we are never, ever, ever. My favorite is, with some indie record, that's much cooler than mine. Oh, God. I knew you were trouble. I knew you were trouble, Taylor. If you ever... Um, had sex with me, that you probably write something like I knew you were trouble. You might actually write something good. You might actually write like a Acid Mother's Temple song or a Throbbing Gristle song, but you wouldn't, you, they wouldn't let you have sex with people like me. Um, so, Red is as good as we're going to do for Taylor, I think. And it's good. It's a fun album. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's her best album. She's got four tens, five tens. She's got four or five tens. I'll let you know all the tens at some point. But what's more difficult for me to figure out is what the best King Crimson album is. Um, In the Court of the Crimson King, perfect album. Islands is one of their great underrated albums. They had that resurgence in the 80s with Adrian Ballou. Um, on the, el the album with, like, Elephant Talk, Discipline, Discipline, all that. Um, but I think Red is the best King Crimson album. It's start to finish, very good. It has Starless, which is probably their kind of masterpiece, like, ultimate statement as a song. The ending jam of Starless kind of to me is the fruition of kind of all of Robert Fripp's music. And Robert Fripp is one of the greatest guitar players. Uh, amazing songwriter. Inspired Jimi Hendrix. Inspired a lot of amazing people to create timeless art. Uh, it's one of the best progressive rock albums of all time. Starts out with the song Red. I prefer the King Crimson Red to the Taylor Red. They're both very good. They're both among the better songs on the records. But, um, yeah, Red, this really dark instrumental passage just sets the tone of the brutality of the record very well. Fallen Angel is a nice ballad with strings and stuff. One More Red Nightmare is awesome. It's one of my favorite songs on the record. Um goes through these different sections that that uh, Bill Bruford line also this has Bruford on it this has peak lineup Crimson this is I believe the final album made by like the proper peak 70s Crimson lineup and uh, it's a fantastic album Providence again sort of a longer ballad moves through sections and just kind of sets up Starless. Um, Starless is among the greatest songs ever written by any band. If you haven't heard it, turn off this review, go listen to just the studio version of Starless from Red, start to finish. Um, it's one of the best songs ever recorded. And, uh, yeah, if you, if you like King Crimson, you should listen to most King Crimson. If you like Taylor Swift, you should listen to most Taylor Swift. Uh, I think the best album that either of these two artists created is called Red. So, I'm giving you two albums that are perfect tens that are red.